Hello, you beautiful YouTube lover, you. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can install Umbraco V9 in a sample site using Visual Studio. Now, this is episode two in my series of how to build epic things using Umbraco V9. Now, in episode one, I did a deep dive of how to install Umbraco using the CLI. So, I showed you how to set up um, SQL, IS, permissions, host names. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is just run you through how to install it through Visual Studio. So, if you want to learn all that SQL, IIS stuff, go back to episode one and have a look. In this video, I'm just going to run through, assuming that you've set everything up. Now, if you love Umbraco V9 and you want to learn all about it, how to upgrade from V8, smash the subscribe button right now because this series on Umbraco V9 is going to be epic. So assuming we've done that, let's crack on and install a sample site. In order to get going with Umbraco 9, you're going to need to have the Umbraco templates installed. Unfortunately, there's no way of doing this without using the command prompt. So what you want to do is head over to NuGet, do packages, umbraco.templates. From here, you can simply just copy the line. And then all you need to do is install it globally. So open up a terminal, type in .NET, install new Umbraco templates, and if everything goes according to plan, job is a good one. So as you can see, if we scroll through this list right now, we have our Umbraco template right here. This is all you need for the command prompt. Now we're ready to get going with Visual yeah. Studio. Now we want to create a new project. So create a new project. From this list, you should have an Umbraco template. Now what we need to do in here is filter the C sharp and by Umbraco. Likely when you open up, you're gonna just have the all project types. So just go from Umbraco. From here, you see two options, one called plugin. Don't wanna use that one. You want to select the Umbraco project. Now I'm just gonna quickly do JDJ Umbraco.v9. I'm gonna do it in my POC folder. Perfect, and let's click next. Now from here, you can start actually configuring Umbraco. However, I find it much easier to just run through the normal installation wizard. So what happens is if we just create now, build our solution, we're going to be able to run the normal Umbraco upgrade wizard. We're going to configure and create our CMS users as normal. This is much easier. We've been doing it for years and years, so let's keep the same process. So obviously, once you have all the files, I recommend that you first do a build, make sure that everything is working. Now, sometimes I've just tried to run the installation wizard just doing a debug from here, and it hasn't worked. So as you can see, we've got a build started. Hopefully, this shouldn't take too long, and the build succeeded. Next, let's just click on IX, IIS Express. This should fire up the Umbraco installation wizard if everything goes to plan. Ba boom. Now from here, you can see that we're going to get access to the Umbraco installation wizard. And this should be very simple to set up. So first, let's create a username. So my name is John. Let's just do John at johndjones.com. My password is going to be password because oh. Password, password. And then let's click next. Now I'm gonna use my SQL database type as SQL Server. I recommend you do the same. So I have got SQL Express. So if you don't know how to do this, check out episode one of my video. I'm gonna call this Umbraco9. And then SA, and then my password is password. Now the one thing that we probably wanna do is actually create the database. However, if the demo gods are going my way, Braco is going to create that database for you, for me, and then we'll go and have a look at how SQL is configured. So boom, you can see installation is complete, get ready to be re redirected to Umbraco. And as you can see, installation really was that simple. In the background, we've got access to my Umbraco. There we go. You can see that we've logged in, we've got everything we wanted. Now, as you can see, we've got a local host, so we'll change this in a minute. However, let's just quickly look at our SQL, make sure that everything's installed. So when you're using SQL, as I said in the last video, properties, security, then you need to make sure that this SQL server and Windows authentication is ticked. You also need to make sure that security, loggings, 
and then SA account if you're using that. Then go to status and then make sure that grant and the login is enabled. Now, if we have a look, we should be able to go to databases. In our databases, we can see that we've got our Umbraco 9 database that we just created. Looking in there, we should have some tables. Beautiful. So that's our database configured. Now, the next thing you need to do if you want to do a good development job is configure IIS so you can access this using a host name. So let's do that quickly. Firing up the Visual Studio codes. What we can do is quickly do a new file. Let's drag this over so you can see it. So I've opened this as an admin. We need to open a file. From here, we're going to go to C, Windows, System32 drivers etc hosts now from here i'm just going to do 127.0.0.1 and i'm just going to put a v7 actually v9 what we're talking about and then that's all my configuration next i'm going to go to iis now the important thing with iis is that you have the correct module installed for .NET. So if you just do .NET 5, all you need to do is head over to this download link. One, you need to make sure that the .NET is installed, so that one. You also need to make sure that the module is installed, so you need to go to Windows Hosting Bundle. Cool. Now within IIS, we just need to create a new website. So right click on Websites, and then click on Add New Website. From here, we can simply create one. I'm gonna call mine B9 physical path, we're going to point it to a, a published directory, which we have yet to create. So in here, we're just going to go to POC. I think I've called mine Umbraco V9, Umb9 maybe. This one here. And I think our directory is going to be in here. So .NET 5, we're going to change this in a minute. Host name is V9. Now the important thing in here after creating it is go to application pools. In here, you can see that we have V9. At the moment, this is set to use .NET 4. What we want to do is right click on that, do advanced settings. From here in this .NET CLR version, change this from .NET 4 to no managed code. Then let's see how that's looking. So if we just do a browse V9, this should hopefully fire up a website. We've got forbidden, blah, blah, blah. Now this is where we need to configure the published directory. So in the normal .NET framework, you could just point IIS to your web server, to your web files, and it will load. However, with .NET Core, you need a web config for in order for IIS to work. And this web config is only going to get generated after you do a publish. So you're going to need to configure your publish process to output the files somewhere meaningful. So let's do that now. Setting up this published profile is super simple. Now, the other thing that I forgot to mention at the start is you also need to make sure that you're using the correct version of Visual Studio. Otherwise, things are not gonna work. So to check that out, just go to About Microsoft Visual Studio. From here, you need to be using 16.8 or later. Now, if you're using anything under that, I think the install wizard will fail. All of this will fail. Your program won't compile. So make sure that you're on 16.8, otherwise you're gonna get yourself into a world of hurt. Now, doing the publish profile is simple. In the top, click on build. On build, you can see that we have the publish. So clicking on that option is gonna give you the publish profile, as you can see here. Now you wanna click on the add a publish profile. This is going to get a little wizard and we want to do a folder publication. So because we're using IS and we're pointing to a folder, so we're gonna do next. There we go. Now I'm gonna put mine in a separate folder and I'm gonna call mine a websites. So in here, you can see that I've got a website folder and I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it V9, click OK, and click OK. Now the reason why I'm not doing this within my web boot is one, if I had a folder in here and I tried to compile, Visual Studio is going to fail. Also, it's likely I'm going to get into lots of locking issues because I've got the same file and IIS pointing into your web directory. It's basically just going to create you a load of pain and hassle. So just create your website outside. 
Now, the reason why we need to create this profile, in case you didn't realize, is because of that little rascal, the web.config. Now in .NET Core and .NET 5, we don't need to have a full web config. So what happens is that when you click that deploy button, all this magic goes off and then we compile a single web config that Umbraco needs to run. So little bits of config are getting from here and there. And that's the reason why we need to do this publish profile, which we didn't used to have to do in the ASP.NET framework. It is what it is, it's not the end of the world. Now obviously when we see we've got this target location, we want to do a copy. So we can do a simple publish now. Now going back into our IIS, all we need to do is simply go into our V9, click on the manage website. So clicking on our manage the website, going to our advanced settings, and then where it says the physical path, we're just going to simply paste in our new website directory. Now I'm gonna turn mine on quickly. And then now if I go to V9, say V9 slash, what we need to do is actually get to our backend screen. And as you can see, I can use my login. So John at johndjones.com password, password. Now, if we try to look at our homepage, we're gonna get an error. And the reason why we're gonna get this error because we don't have any pages set up. So to get started, what I recommend you do is click on packages up here. On packages, you can go to the start kits up there. Or from this main screen, you can see that we actually have the starter kit. So what we want to do is click on that. And then all we want to do is get this little install script here. So .NET add package umbraco starter kit. So let's quickly do that right now. Copy that. Now, what we want to do is a clear. Then we want to do, well, first, make sure that you're in the correct directory. So you can see I'm in my umbraco.vine9 directory. Click on this, should hopefully install the template, which is beautiful. Then I can do a .NET build. I know I'm cheating from here. Of course, if you really want to, you can do the build in Visual Studio yourself. So now we're back in the Visual Studio. Hopefully we should be able to do a publish. Now let's have a look when we do our publish. If everything's going according to plan, you can see that our publish has succeeded. Now let's have a look at IS. It's all set up. If I go back to my website and click the refresh, nothing has worked boo obviously you've got go. this 500 error so let's try and debug it so what we're going to do is first go over to our log files so this can be found in our solution so if we just go back to john d jones and then if we go to our umbraco folder we can look within the umbraco folder and in here you can see something called logs now you can actually get access to logs via Umbraco backend, and this used to be found in app.data. However, now it is within here. Now firing this up. Yes, we've already got code editor up. Stop being naughty. If we fire this up and have a look, you can see that we scroll down the bottom. We've got this no physical template file was found warning. So we've got one for home. And we've got another one up here because I've been clicking the reload button, scratching my head a little bit. So now if we go back to our Visual Studio, you can see that we don't actually have any of the templates. And for whatever reason, the package actually hasn't installed. So let's go back to the previous website that I installed using the CLI alone. So this was down here and it's called Umbraco 9. Now, as you can see in my view folder here, I should actually have a load of files called home master people. And from here, you can see that I do not have these files. So this looks like an issue with the install process to me. I don't think there's anything that I've done massively wrong. So what we're gonna do is whiz through everything again. I'm not gonna have the full stops in my name next time. And we're gonna see what happens. I have run through the installation process again, create a brand new site. This time I'm going to try and install the Stars Kit via NuGet instead. So I'm going to go to Manage NuGet Packages, 
from here, I'm going to type in ambaraco.vstarter kit. And let's install it this way and see what happens. Now, I said when I did all this through the CLI last time, everything worked perfectly. So let's see what happens if I do it this way. Now, if I do a build, and then now if I do a, let's fire off in IS Express first, rather than going through IS itself and let's see what happens. And this is going to be a mystery until we see what happens. Are we going to get another error page or are we going to see a beautiful starter site? Boom. So this time around, all I did is exactly the same process. However, except for installing everything through the CLI, did it through NuGet. So my recommendation is that if you're installing the site via NuGet and through Visual Studio, just use the NuGet package to install the starter site. So let's try and configure this properly now. So now we've got this up and running. Let's go back in here, close it off. Now let's change our publish profile. So remember build publish. From here, we're gonna set up a new one because I've, it's a brand new project. So let's go into C, Windows. And then from here, we're gonna go to websites and then let's create a new website. Let's call it test sites. Not ideal, but hey, hey. Click OK and then let's do finish. So as you can see now, actually looking at our view folder, we've got all of those files that look like they were missing, which is beautiful. Now let's click publish. So we've got false, release, portable. Now within our IIS, we need to repoint this. So let's go manage website, advanced settings. From here, let's do C. Websites test sites this time click OK re-enable my website because I turned it off we've got this published now if we click on browse let's see what happens fingers crossed let's hope we get a sample site because I was not expecting that little bump in the road see what happens boom we've actually got ourselves a star site so rather than editing, editing this video, cutting out, making it all look perfect, I thought I'd have that little hump in the road just in case if you get the same problem, then you can de-diagnose and debug the same issue yourself. So if you're installing everything via NuGet and through Visual Studio, I recommend that you use NuGet rather than do this mix and max of CLI and NuGet. I don't know, it should probably work. Obviously it didn't for this occasion. However, that's a little bit of advice from me to you. I'm hoping for the people out there who requested this installation via Visual Studio, you are very happy. You're welcome. Now, if I'm honest, that was a lot more painful than I thought it was gonna be and a lot more time consuming. You can see it's getting dark outside and I start this in daylight. As you're seeing, like installing Umbraco via Visual Studio should take five, 10 minutes. Obviously I had those issues with the stars kit. However, you know, that shouldn't put you off. Installing V9, super simple. I recommend you give it a try. Now, this is episode two in my Umbraco V9 series. Keep tuned, subscribe, all that sort of stuff so you can see how to upgrade your V8 website to V9. So I'll be upgrading johndjones.com from V8 to V9 within the series and telling you how to build menus, how the log file works, how to all do, you know, all that amazing stuff. So smash subscribe. If you want to do me the massive solid, then hit that like button because that will trick the YouTube algorithm into showing my video to more peoples. So I would love that. Also, if you want you know, any of the um, content yourself, leave a comment below. Any suggestions, any ideas that you want to see in this series, please let me know because obviously these videos are for you rather than just me talking to myself in front of a camera. Otherwise, I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are. Hope you've got some value from this video and happy coding.